all of you to this uh, lecture on alumni leadership lecture series. Uh, I have the proud privilege to introduce Dr. Meka Vijay Papa Rao. He uh, did his schooling from Rishi Valley and then later passed out from IIT Madras in 1917 mechanical engineering. He went to United States and got his PhD in plasma physics and nuclear engineering from University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. His thesis examiner was uh, Professor John Bardeen, who is known for his work on transistor, and he's also the only person who has received two Nobel Prizes in uh, physics. So the special feature of Dr. Rao's thesis was discovering two in new invariants to help study transport of fusion products in tokamak fusion reactors. So Dr. Rao and his wife, Mrs. Rajalakmi Rao, they came back to India in 1977, immediately after Dr. Rao got his PhD. And since then, uh, he joined his uh, father in laws company specializing in port construction. In 1982, he started his own company called Amma Lines Limited. I suppose not to be confused with any local <laughs> uh, political things. Specializing in port construction. Amma Lines and its sister companies have built nearly 70% of the new jetties and ports in Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu. In May 2010, the West Bengal government has given Amma Lines the permission to develop rupees 6,000 crore deep water port in West Bengal based on Dr. Rao's design patent. He founded one of India's main dredging companies, Maker Dredging Company Limited, and the year, following year founded India's leading subsea intake pipeline laying company, Maker Infrastructure uh, Private Limited, which has designed and exec executed the first intake outfall pipeline system of its size at the 100 megaliter uh, per day, namely desalination plant. near uh, Mahabali from Tamil Nadu. Dr. Rao's design patents cover three deep water ports in India. Based on this, in 2002, Maharashtra government awarded 50 years boost license to develop Rs. 5,200 crores Revas port, the deepest port in Maharashtra. Mukesh Ambani's Reliance Group has joined Revas port as majority shareholder. Dr. Paparov is the chairman of Revas port. Apart from the above business achievements, he is also the chairman of board of trustees of Andhra Education Society in Wadala, Mumbai, which educates 4,500 poor students belonging to various castes and communities of Andhra and other states, uh, other states people settled in Mumbai. Today, Dr. Rao is going to give a talk on hovercrafts, fusion reactors and ports, and the thread that connects them, innovation in engineering. I'm curious, like you, how Dr. Rao is going to connect all these diverse subjects. So let's welcome Dr. Rao for the cinema. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and my, my classmates who are also here. It gives me great pleasure to be here as a guest lecturer to tell you some of the interesting things we are able to do because of our training in IIT and my schooling in Rishi Valley. And first, I think before I take you to the outside projects, I will start with the project we started in IIT itself. Okay, that will make it very interesting. And in those days, can you hear me? Uh, in those days, a student was given only 1000 rupees for his final year project. And nothing more. One day we were watching in the OAT theater, Dean Martin movie with a, chasing a guy with a hovercraft. So we said, this is the right thing to make for our B.Tech project. And so we started studying, went to IIT, a library, lot of literature was there. But we found out, uh, went to Enfield, motorcycle company through Professor B.S. Murthy and the guy, Mr. Murli Krishna was ready, was generous enough to give us two engines, Sherpa engines, 175 cc. But still we needed 11,000 rupees to make the hovercraft body. And uh, Professor Murthy, who was my guide, plus Narayan Murthy, who was the head of the mechanical engineering, they have supported me. But we had to have a committee including aeronautical head. And uh, 
professor, uh, the, the head of the aeronautics department, he said, no way, you can't make this as a BTEC project. Uh, I myself tried it with a pushback engine and it didn't work, so forget it. But my uh, professor B.S. Murthy was very supportive. He said, let's go to the director. Mm. You can you can so, we went to the director, Dr. A. Ramachandran, he was the second director of IIT and uh, we had to put, put our case forward for saying, sir, 11,000 rupees I require, not 1,000. So, Professor Ramachandran said, Dr. Ramachandran said, Papa Rao, I was told you are going away to America. What is the use of sanctioning this project? No, sir, I will finish it. No, no, but you have to stay back after the exam and stay and finish it. I said, yes, sir, I will stay back and finish it. Then, what's the problem? Go ahead. No, sir, it's a, B, it's a MTech project. It's not a BTech project. Why is your professor of aeronautics? I don't want to give the name. Okay. Let him fail. It is better that Paparov fails now than later in life. Let him. And that's how we have got the first hovercraft of India built in IIT Madras. And now the, now the next part was, uh, since it became a sensational project, I'll show you all the directors, deputy directors, everybody sitting on my hovercraft and having a ride. But more than that, Prof. Uh, uh, Mr. V. V. Giri was coming for our convocation. And uh, so they brought a silver chair for V. V. Giri, President. Then suddenly Mrs. V. V. Giri says, no, I also want to sit on the dais. So again, they had to run and bring another silver chair for her. Then we wanted him to inaugurate our hovercraft. But suddenly it occurred to me, how do I test? whether this hovercraft can take Mr. Vivi Giri's weight. So we brought the heaviest professor in the uh, person, Professor Sampath, and made him sit and he, it, it lifted off. No problem it was. So we said, okay, now we are ready to bring Professor Vivi Giri. But then said, somebody said, what if Mrs. Vivi Giri also wants to sit? I said, no way. So we are not going to make it uh, open for both of them. So that was the story of the hovercraft which we made first time in India. Abroad there are so many hovercrafts but first time in India thanks to Professor Ramachandran we were able to do it. Okay. Next, uh, why I brought this example is in, in IIT we had so much encouragement to do anything and uh, I was very fortunate that my colleagues will know I was the only student given two rooms in IIT, one for doing experiments, other one for sleeping. So we had a tremendous uh, fun in IIT. Then we went to states, but before I tell you what we did in states, I, I went to fusion reactors. I, I mean, after hovercraft, I went to nuclear engineering. And what I did in nuclear engineering and the invariance, I will tell you last. But I will tell you something about the innovation in engineering. That's what I want the, our students to know first. And one of the innov innovations we have done, how many of your civil engineers here, anybody? Okay. So in civil engineering, if you know, or you will go into the fields in a rainy day in a black cotton field, your foot will sink inside. Same thing happens in, in the sea. Marine clay is there. So much of marine clay that if you go inside, you will sink with it. So we have a similar situation in, Ch in Bombay where they wanted to build a uh, new port of Bombay, which is now the biggest port. It's called JNPT, Jawaharlal Nehru Port Trust. But there is seven meters of clay under the sea. 
and they want to make another 7 meters of breakwater, that means 14 meters is the height. So as you know, in any trapezium, the bottom base is almost three times the top half. So the Japanese came to me, Mitsui and company, and they said, Mr. Paparao, uh, you have built a Tutikoran port, which incidentally happens to be the longest breakwater in the world. It was in the Guinness Book of Records also. But this is a different story because in Tutukoran we had no marine clay. If you dump it, it remains there. Whereas in Bombay, the marine clay is so much, if I dump it, it will just go inside. So I gave them an idea. What I said is, this marine clay can be made hard like stone. But they said, this is inside the sea. How can you pump out water from the marine clay inside the sea? I said, have you seen your mother making cheese, paneer? Paneer, you put the paneer and squeeze the water out. Then the paneer becomes hard, you can even cut it. Same thing can be done under the sea also. What? They said, yes. Yes, we can do it. So, lo and behold, they gave me the work order. <laughs> we tried and we succeeded. But, I'm just waiting for the photos to come. Then I'll have to, i just give you a brief uh, run of all the things that happened. In, in Navashiva, the, we have saved nearly 7 crore rupees worth of stone because we have put a cloth on the clay, held it firm and then put the stones. And as the stones were being put, the clay the water was coming oozing out of the fiber, uh, textile, geotextile cloth. And finally, after two or three layers of stone, the clay became so strong, like in a summer, all the water inside the clay was removed. It's like, how could you remove the water inside the clay, inside the sea? Therefore, it is possible, but this is where your fundamentals have to be very clear. If, you, if the fundamentals are clear, you can have no problem and we have done it successfully and we have saved nearly 7 crore worth of stones there. And for people who have come to Bombay to my house, anybody come to my house, DC? Okay, that was a gift from the Japanese. Okay. This is the hovercraft we made. This is just outside the IC Indians laboratory taken out. You can see it is floating on this much air, you know, eight inches air. This was named after my friend, classmate, who encouraged me to make the, break, uh, the Rajini. It was named after him, Rajini Kant who encouraged me to make this hovercraft. Next one. Okay. These photos are, my son managed to pick them out from all the dustbin. Uh, so this is our uh, Dr. Ramachandran, Mr. Uh, first director, and both of us sitting in the hovercraft. Next, please. I'll quickly run this. This is Dr. I mean, Mr. Professor Sampath, our deputy director, both of us sitting on the, so it could stand Mr. V.V. Giri, no problem, okay. Next, uh, this is the entire team. He is my professor, B.S. Murthy, Narayan Murthy, head of the mechanical engineering, and the whole team who helped me build this in this IC Indian's lab. Next. Uh, this is interesting because it's made of plywood, but where do I design? 
drawing boards are too small, we have to actually visualize. So I used the Ganga hostel, my room wall to make the design. That's how I made the design. Next. This all the carpenters who helped me prepare. Next. Ah, now next is the JNPT. This is the floating guy breakwater. Underneath, the, underneath this, there is a cloth. You can't see it, but you will see. Uh, but this, since this is the first time in Asia, it is done. The naval chiefs, the shipping ministry official, they all came to see how we have done it. Next, uh, this is a geotextile. This is 65 meters. That means 200 feet wide and 650 meters long and it is a very difficult task because the cloth is 4 millimeters thick. How do you stitch it? How do you join it? How do you tighten it? So there was a lot of technical te uh, technological challenges here and after putting the cloth inside the water then you put these stones slowly. So here I wanted to tell something interesting to the, all the budding engineers. We have to hold the cloth like a hammock, you know, when between two trees you put the baby. That's why it remains tight. So similarly, you have to make a hammock out of this cloth, hold it by two anchors. So we put eyelets, you know, like tarpaulin eyelets, made eyelet, big eyelets, big ropes, concrete blocks, everything was done. Next, tide, tuck, 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 everything broke. The currents and the forces are so much that nothing could stand. Then I saw one Gujarati gen gentleman with a topi. He was putting a coin in his dhoti. I said, sir, what are you doing that for? He said, beta, that's how my dhoti is not help stop from falling. So what I did was, you saw the coin, I made a small cricket ball of concrete, wrapped it, that's how we succeeded. The eyelets did not work. It's the coin of that, my Gujarati friend, which gave the idea how to hold such big forces. That's how we succeeded in this. Next, ah, this is the naval chief, Mr. Admiral S.K. Chand, this is the development advisor ports. All these people have come to see. That's the cloth behind, you can see, you know. Yeah, here is the cloth, the barge behind, the white cloth. So this is how we could save about 7 crore rupees worth of stone. It is, it's an environmentally friendly solution. And we don't have to destroy nature. We can still build ports without destroying nature, without using too much of stone, provided we know how to use the natural resources. And this is where our engineering and our innovation comes. Next, please. OK. This is a certificate from, can you focus a little more? This. A little more. This is the thing, the first time in this side of Asia given by the certificate from the JNPT chief engineer. Next. Ah, the next, see we have done a lot of um, interesting jobs, but I thought I'll just pick two or three, just to show you that the solutions are there in a dhoti, solutions are there everywhere. You just have to see how to solve the difficult problems. Now. For example, this problem came to me. This, uh, there is a fertilizer company called IFCO, Indian Farmers and Fertilizers Company. It's a cooperative. They were building a fertilizer company in UP. And the contractor was taking a 100 ton package on a bridge, new bridge, PWD bridge, and the bridge broke. So they banned him from using any of the public bridges. So he came to me and said, Papa Rao, look, we need two bridges on Ganga River and uh, we wasted 18 months. We got only one month's time to build the bridges and before the monsoon comes. Other you have to wait till next season. 
So, I went and saw the thing. There is a company called UP State Bridge Corporation. Anybody heard about it? Yeah. They build one bridge per day on an average all over India. They went to them. They said, sorry, there is no solution. You have to do it. You have to do it. It takes two years to do it. So, what I came, this is an interesting from civil engineering point of view because uh, we have built Asia's longest rail come road bridge in Rajamindri, you know, and we had to go 200 feet inside the river bed and 200 feet, anything more than 30 feet, if you have to go inside, you need pressurized divers, chambers, very complicated. It's just like a submarine. You need two chambers, first uh, nitrogen accl acclimatization, everything. After seeing the, uh, how, we, how complicated it was to make the rail um, road bridge in Rajamindri, we decided well, there must be a better solution. So, why do they have to go 200 feet? Why do they have to go 200 feet for a foundation? That means the whole concrete is 200 feet from the river bed. They have to go, that well has to be 200 feet down. So that is because the river Ganges or Godavari, any river, it does, just does not flow on the top. It flows up to 200 feet under the bed also up to 150 feet it, it flows. So your foundation has to be lower than that. That's why we used to go for 200 feet. But since there's no time and there's only one month to build the bridge, therefore how do you reduce the scouring depth? That is because the, the scouring, the river flows, there's a scouring. So how do you reduce the scouring depth? So what I did was, instead of putting concrete, I dredged three meters and put stones and reduced the scouring depth to two meters in this bed. From 40, 50 meters, I made it two meters plus five meters, seven meters, instead of 40 meters. So it worked so beautifully and you can see the big trailer, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like this. 25 tire, you can see the trailer, such a big trailer. And this is since this is 420 tons and the trailer is another 80 tons. So what I did was I loaded 500 tons on each to just to make sure it is safe because the entire project will stop if this falls into the river. Okay, and we succeeded. Next. Okay. Uh, no, no. Get the next, next, next. Some, some more. Some more. Some. Ah, yes. Yeah. This is the one. Can you? Yes. We did it ahead of schedule. In 25 days we did it, the whole job. In 25 days we finished the, and crossed the things. So in other words, what I wanted to say is that, yes, what I wanted to say is, it's just an idea. The scouring depth, civil engineers, we all know that river flows under this river bed. So that's why you have to go below the foundation. Either you go the foundation below the bed or you raise this, reduce the scouring depth. One of these two. So this is how innovation is applicable and how we be win the cases. Otherwise you would have taken minimum two, two and a half years to make those two bridges. Okay, next. No, no. Uh, no, go back, go back. Ah, uh, yeah. The third, this is the last case I'm going to give you. Okay, after that we'll go to the interesting part of physics. 
First, I'm going to tell you the engineering first. Anybody who's got questions, please ask. Huh? Uh, don't have to uh, wait till the end. Okay. I don't know whether this is picture is clear. This is the last part of this is Bengal, and this is Bangladesh. Anybody's got a yeah. This is all Bangladesh and this is all West Bengal. Now West Bengal is got a very pecu uh, peculiar problem, not politically, I am talking about physically, geo geophysically. That, that is uh, the Ganges river comes in so many tributaries that it becomes a big problem for it brings so much of sand, so much of sand that you dig today and it's filled up tomorrow. And it's a nightmare for a ship's captain to bring the ship into Calcutta port. The reason is I dig today and the people tell me this is the channel you please go on this. Okay. Within two days the channel is filled up and my ship is stuck. And there are so many wrecks all along here. It's a nightmare. There are so many wrecks of shipwrecks because they are stuck in the sand. So they came to me, the West Bengal government came to me and said, Mr. Paparao, can you design a, a deep water port for us? I said, uh, sir, you call tender. No, no, we have called a tender. In fact, we, because we are supporting the central government, central government wanted to do us a favor. They called on our behalf and we were ready to pay 10 crores to anybody who comes and gives design. They should be happy. But they said, any design you give should be accepted by a builder by a developer. If I give a design and say build it like this, because most, nowadays most of the ports are under BOOT principle. That means you spend the money, you earn the money and you return it after some time. So unless the design is economical and the maintenance is economical, nobody wants to come. So for two years, the, the central government, Delhi government, try to send people to various consultants to get a design and after two years they gave up and told the West Bengal government, sorry sir, we are not able to get a single consultant to design a deep water port in West Bengal, now you can go ahead. That's when they called me. So I studied the whole thing. Yes please. Oh, press. Ah. Can you enlarge it a little more? No, no. Yeah, no, no. The previous one. Yeah, enlarge it. Can you zoom it? Yeah. So I showed you the overall picture. Yeah, one minute. Huh? Just show the previous picture. The previous picture. No, no, no uh, that one, yeah. So, this is the one I showed you earlier. Now I'm zooming in onto India. I'm leaving Bangladesh and I'm coming to India. Now you can show this next one, yeah. So, I'm zooming in. So, I saw this. First, uh, zoom out first. Yeah. So first, this is the picture I had seen without going to the site, and I saw a lot of uh, a lot of this green. That means these are all silted up. This is a channel. Imagine how the sand is filled up. The green is means the sand is filled up. This is all filled up. Here it is eight meters. Here it is one meter, two meters here. Again it is 7 meters here and 1 and 2 meters here, again it is 6 meters here. 
okay. it is like a horseshoe if you notice and you can see how the sand has before the same boundary was here 20 years ago now the boundary has come here it is like the fingers this is the thumb and the fingers so this is the 10 meter depth this is the 20 meter depth so what I said was this is the ideal place to build the port why this is where I want you to it just a map of 1000 rupees I had purchased okay but I saw this of course this I have darkened it now but otherwise it was not dark you know if you see this map it was the, the same drawing is there but it is not dark at all okay but now we have darkened this just to show this is our area of interest and also you can see the currents see the currents are in this direction if you see see these currents they are going in this direction that means this is the alignment of the sand natural with the currents natural with the currents so that means it is it is an alignment which has come to stay it will not be changing because the currents are parallel to that so what I said was since this is almost at this level you can see you can walk there so I said why not we build it here we build the port, uh, we design the port next this one, this side, this slide no, ah this slide so you see on the shallow patch we have built this therefore the amount of material you require is so little because from nine and a half to two, 11 meters is already formed, nine and a half below low bed to two meters above, 11 meters already, the, this bunt is already there. So we do not have to fill any material. All I have to do is just fill up, I have to fill up only the above. And we got such fantastic results that the siltation uh, today government of uh, India is subsidizing West Bengal to the extent of 450 crores 450 crores to maintain a depth of 6 meters to, for the ships to go to Calcutta now they minimum nowadays you require 14 to 18 meters otherwise it is not a port anymore if they have to do even 14 meters they will have to spend 2000 crores every year at 6 meters you are there spending every year 450 crores and 2000 crores means every year it becomes unviable port in fact somebody has filed a uh, PIL last week to close Calcutta port okay the why this is the reason so with now because of this they called us and gave us the letter of intent please go ahead and start constructing and now from 2000 crores per year our dredging maintenance cost is going to be less than 50 crores this is where I wanted to tell you that it is nothing but the, you have to keep a watch there are so many wealth of information available on the maps on the things but it is for you to come up with ideas and now I, okay this is how it is on the maps let us see how it is from the sky this is how it is from the sky see this is a white portion can you see that that under the water it is like this 
and all I am doing is just add this extra portion to make it the Now, this port, uh, I wanted to see what the government of India, environmental ministry has said about this design. Can you focus it please? This one. Zoom in, zoom out, some more. Uh, the government of India committee, environmental committee, uh, expert advi committee has said that the proposal appeared to be to be a very innovative one and could be of extreme strategic and economic value. The reason is, I feel if this port comes up, India and China will become friends again. The reason is, China is more interested in economics rather than getting that land and this land. They got enough land. The only ports China has is on the east coast. If this thing comes up, can you show the, this, no, no, next, oh, no, no, next, no, pre, okay, if this thing comes up, okay, this is 24 kilometers, this is 24, 26, 26, 26, 52 divided by 350, so 150 berths can be built here, just inside and 150 berths and each berth is 10 million tons, that means 1 crore tons, okay, 150 into 10, 1500 million tons or the entire cargo that is being handled today in the entire, all around the country is only 500 million. So this port has got three times the capacity of all the other ports of India put together. And China will come in because we got adequate space. Bangladesh will come because they don't have a deep water port. So this will be, that's why the, the environment ministry has recognized the economic value of this design. Okay. And my friends, I am just trying to tell you, I just bought a thousand rupee map. In fact, for the first time I have been to the site was two weeks back. But already approved, we have given approval everything, government has given us everything. Yeah. So in other words, there are many designs, many things you can do and gives you a golden opportunity. India is now in a developing stage. In fact, when we came back in 77, my, my wife was expecting a baby. Eight months pregnant, we came back. Everybody said, we are fools. You could have had the baby in America. I said, no, India is going to grow. India is going to grow and it's going to grow like anything. And if you miss it, we're going to be left behind. So that is how, this is the third example Either many examples, I just want to give you only three examples to show that you can make a difference. If I can save 2,000 crores per year, that is enough of my contribution, okay? That is the engineering part. Now anybody has got a question, please tell me. Yes, please. No, we have to have a team. We have built all this. In fact, I would like to tell you, we have built most of the ports in Tamil Nadu. We have built most of the ports in Maharashtra. Okay. So, whenever we have we build a port, we need a big team. We have full teams coming. Depending on the size, we again, we make up. So, the core is only 100 people. We have top people. But rest of it is all we take from the local contractors, subcontractors, everything. So, the point is, you, it's for you to make a design, okay, and you give it to them. For example, I have not shown you here, we are, we are working with LNT. Everybody knows about LNT, it's a famous company. And I saw them building a jetty at uh, Surat costing 40 crores using piles. 
I said, sir, why are you doing so much, so, uh, spending so much money? I'll give you a design much, much better. They said, go ahead. So we built a jetty which is four times stronger and 40% cheaper. They were very fair enough. I told them on one condition, you don't copy my design and give it to ECC, which is their subsidiary. Okay. So even the best companies, the Enor port we have built, okay. Officially, it's Hindustan construction, but actual work we have done. Okay, we have done Hindustan construction. We have done uh, Enor port. We have done the Karakal port. We have done the Tuticorin port. In between, so many other ports we have done in Tamil Nadu. So, this is see building up a team is not a problem. Okay, today they are with you, tomorrow they are with them. There is no problem, but. You, you have to win the tender and the tender you will win only by ideas because in marine construction you can build a port for 1000 crores, you can build a port, same port for 3000 3, crores. It is not so in building construction, it is not so in bridge construction, only in marine construction, port construction the difference is vast, very vast, you know. It's all because it depends on what ideas you use, how you do the excavation, how you do the dredging, how you do the breakwater, whether you have one in two slope, one in one, three, one third slope, all depends on you. So that is where I got into, after the next challenge after nuclear was this. And I found, uh, there are a lot of cases, but I, I, don't, I don't want to say that right now. But I think these three cases should be enough to kindle the fire that you can win, hands down, if you apply. And this is what IIT trains us for, okay. And they encouraged me when I was there by giving me extra room for doing my experiments, okay, which I'm thankful to them. And I'm very thankful to Dr. Ramchandran for giving me the opportunity to make the first hovercraft in India. But we have carried forward that, okay. And everywhere I hear about IIT Madras students doing very well. And I want the new batch also to do the same thing, you know, okay. Now, last I'm going to, yes, sir. No, sir. I studied Chittagong because we don't have this horseshoe form formation there. Can you, can you show this map? I'll just show you which one. Yes. See, sir. This is this is uh, this is Bangladesh. You know, we don't have these horseshoe formations here. You see these fingers. The fingers end with India because India loves to finger everybody, you know, that's why, you know, that's why. Whereas Bangladesh, it is uniform. And one more thing is we need to make a compound wall. The main thing is we need to make a compound wall. What I've done here is I made a compound wall. That is why it's not filling up. If I did not do the compound wall, the enclosing from all the three sides, I would have had the same situation as Calcutta port, spending 450 crores or 2000 crores depending on the depth. But I feel this is enough to cater to not only Chittagong, even China. And this is hardly any distance for us to go to, hardly any distance. The advantages of 20 meter draft you cannot get here because 20 meter contour you can see, you know. You didn't want to flare it. No, sir. Because the reason why I didn't want to flare it is I, I don't want the sand to come in. But if in no, but the tide is this way also, no? That one tide is this way, one tide is this way. 
and then uh, sometimes cyclones come this way suppose yeah, so yeah so we we have kept adequate uh, gap there so that the two lanes of ships can go at the same time it's protected and the another advantage of that is can you show that uh, yeah this one another adva another advantage of this is I can have 20, 25 meter draft vessels here. I can have 12 meter draft vessels here. I don't have to dredge the entire thing 25 meters. And if bigger vessels are required, then we'll do dredging more. So the, it's a reverse slope, which is good. It washes out the silt. You know. Yes, please. Does it become a constraint to have a 20 meter draft berthing structures? Sir, we have checked here, it's all sand. It's all sand. 30 meters tuck sandy hai. Maybe after 30, I don't know. But because why, you can understand why, because this is all coming. And we have walked all along. You can see all this. We have walked all along. There's no clay at all, you know. Yes, please. Sir, what is the first thing came to your mind before starting First thing came into mind? Mind, sir. Before starting a project. Before starting a project? Which project? No. No, this, see, they asked us to give, us a, give them a solution. You know, the chief minister and the whole team called and they said, we want you to take up this work. Okay. So, they even approached Reliance to take up this work. Reliance said, no, we cannot do it. They, then they told me, you better take it. Okay, because when uh, the Ministry of Shipping gave up, then they wrote a letter to the Chief Minister saying, we are not able to do it, you go ahead. It's a very difficult problem. Imagine they are spending 450 crores every year. And even then, the ships are getting stuck up. So, the, what, my, what came to my mind is how to design in such a way that you don't spend so much in dredging. And, uh, in fact, um, can you show the general? Yeah, this one. The Ministry of Shipping was planning, this is called Sagar Island. They are planning to make a jetty here, deep jetty here, and then put a railway line, go like this, go like this and come. Who is going to build it? Who is going to spend it? Whereas with our design, the nearest line, a railway line, is only 10 kilometers away. Yeah. The, the railway line is here. This is the railway line. It's only 10 kilometers from here. So, we don't have to do any... For example, there are other ports called Pipawa. Pipawa port and uh, Mundra port. Pipawa port, they had to build nearly 374 kilometers of railway line. And Mundra port had to build 174 kilometers railway line. It's a huge cost. Whereas with this, they, since there's always, there's already a railway line, which is like this coming, we have to make only this 10 kilometers. So that's why we have chosen this. And also in West Bengal, you all must have heard about the Tata Singur clash, you know, where Tatas had to leave West Bengal because they wanted only 300 acres and West Bengal could not give. And it became a political issue. So when they saw that I'm not asking for one acre of land, they said, please come. I said, we will make our own land. And uh, later, I mean, I, I don't want to go into the details. The amount of material we are getting for dredging this is enough to fill up this. Fill up and make our own land. Exactly we can get, you know. So we're not asking them any land. We are not asking to acquire a fresh land for railway lines because railway lines are already there. 
So your solution, what I am trying to say is, your solution should be a win-win situation. We are not asking any private land or acquisition of any private land. So the Singhu Tata problem is not there. Second is we are not asking government of India to subsidize dredging. Our dredging is only 50 crores compared to. So it's a win-win situation for the central government, win-win situation for the state government, and win-win situation you will get much cheaper. Your cost of handling containers will be much reduced. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, what I'm what I'm saying is, no, no, other one. Next, next, next one, next one. Next one. Uh, if I make an island here, then I'm blocking this route. This is my channel. Sir, sir, I I've got plenty of time to fill up this because this is already at zero. You can see zero, and this is minus two. Yeah. Only, only problem is if I have a finger jetty anywhere here, here, anywhere, it just fills up. If it's open jetty, it just fills it up. That's why I made a, a 26 long, uh, what do you call, uh, um, this burn. Why? I'm, because the natural formation is at 26 kilometers. I'm not gone beyond that. You know. This is this is how I feel. You know, we can use the nature, use the nature, whatever nature is made. And also next question is, will this change? Will the contours change and the ship, uh, the wash it out? I said no, because the currents are also in the same direction. The currents are in the same direction. So we got it tested in Denmark, complete, tested the whole thing in DHI. We got it tested and it's come out beautiful. And the siltation is 800,000 cubic meters. Whereas Bombay Portus is five and a half million cubic meters. Whereas today uh, um, Calcutta Portus is 30 million cubic meters. You know, ours is less than one million cubic meters. So, I mean, this is just, uh, I wanted to give you all you Friends, just to say that you can come up with so many ideas. India is growing and growing, okay? And it's just the innovation you win. Otherwise, you know, who is Papa Rao? Who is this? There are bigger companies ready to come uh, from abroad, but this is where they don't score. They go by the regular route. The regular route, what they meant was, they said, we'll make a jetty from the Sagar Island and we'll unload the containers there, say, send it by barges, this, that, you know, it doesn't, it's not a practical solution. I mean, they may say anything, but it won't work. We have to have a situation where the railway line is not only 10 kilometers. We've got a road, national highway there. We've got a road, uh, Calcutta, uh, Madras, uh, national highway is going there. And next is the, uh, that um, dedicated freight corridor is coming nearby. So. It is a situation where we have everything. Okay, that, yes, sir. Yeah, please. Oh, uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Sir, this is five. This is five meters. Only five meters. This is five. This is six. This is seven. This is three. This is seven point eight. This is two point four, two point seven. Again, this is ten. So you are like bridge 
Yeah. Yeah. Only five meters. Can we can. We can. Problem. We can. No problem. But only thing is, here the current. You have to study the whole thing. You know, I don't want to say why. Why I'm saying this is, if Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal, which is one of the world wonders of the world. Do you know how it is built? Anybody idea? Anybody can give me? On what foundation is Taj Mahal built? It is withstood 550 years of floods of Yamuna. No, no, I'm talking foundation. <laughs> Anybody please, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to participate, make you people participate, let you guess anything wrong, no problem. Huh? Well foundation, anybody else? What type of well, sir? Huh? Sir, we don't have steel at those days, there is no reinforcement. Huh? Right. So they made a wooden well. You are right. They made a wooden well and in that they filled up with stone. That's exactly what I've done in my uh, that uh, rapid bridge. I made a well, dug up the whole thing and I filled up with wood, you know, with uh, stone. So the, till the last package moved, after it will be removed it. We don't need it now because there is another bridge. PWD bridge is there, but they are not allowing us to use that. Because 100 ton package, they broke the bridge, another place. So this 500 ton package, they will not allow. Though it's a double A classification bridge. So, yes, it's a, it is a wooden thing they have put. Okay, driven wooden piles and driven, put stone in that. But now the sad part is, what we are doing to Taj Mahal is, all of you should rise and do something about it is, the foundation may crumble any time. Because that wood which they have used is very good as long as the Yamuna river flows. The moment Yamuna river dries up, the wood also crumbles. So now, I was reading the internet the other day, they are alarmed. You'll, you'll start appear, cracks will start appearing in Taj in the next 5-6 years. So in other words, it, the country, now anybody can come up with ideas, please come, you know, write to the ministry. Never know, yeah, why, in fact, uh, Mahindra has advertised that anybody who gives a brilliant idea is going to get 1 million dollars, you know. Innovation, they want to reward innovation. Now, that is my engineering part. Now I'm going to go into something interesting, which is going to be lasting, long lasting. That is, what I've done in plasma physics. My interest is nuclear engineering and plasma physics. And before I say anything, let me say pranam to my guru, you know, he is the <coughs> Professor Bardeen, everybody knows, he is the only man in the world to win two Nobel Prizes. One, he won for the transistor and second, he won for superconductivity. He was working on superconductivity before he worked on transistor. For 10 years he was working on it, didn't move an inch, finally gave up on superconductivity, went to Bell Labs because he wrote an article and Bell Labs saw the article and said please make it for us. So he made the transistor in 1949, he won the Nobel Prize in 56, after he won the Nobel Prize he came back to the university, within three months he worked on his old topic of superconductivity and he came with the solution. 
for which he was again nominated for the Nobel Prize. 57 again he was nominated. But since in uh, as per the Nobel Committee you can win a Nobel Prize only once. You can't win second time. Because they are giving you recognition for the dedication to the field rather than. But they had to make a special exception because the other two scientists with Professor Bardeen were being deprived of it. Okay. So they made exception in 72 when I was, this is the photo of both of us on the day when he won the Nobel Prize. Okay. So now I am going to, okay now, now I am going to say something interesting. Anybody in physics here? Okay. Uh, uh, what type of physics sir? Atomic, atomic physics. Oh very good. Uh, anything in plasmas? We have a discharge source. Huh? We, have, we are working with a discharge source. Okay. Now um, about somebody asked me today in an interview, sir why you quit nuclear engineering? Okay. I would like to answer that because my father refused to talk to me after he came back saying you are supposed to win the Nobel Prize and you really came back for what? I said, I told him daddy the nuclear engineering I went for is a Kalpakkam type of reactor and in 1972 they showed me a secret movie US Atomic Energy. Why? This is very important for all your children. Reason is we are going to protect our country. We have to protect our country. and. One of the, uh, they showed us a movie, secret movie, which is not shown anywhere in the world. Which is the first nuclear accident you heard of, tell me? Three Mile Island. Three Mile Island. Chernobyl. Chernobyl and Fukushima, right? These are the three. But before all the three, there was another accident, which they showed it to us in Idaho. In a place called Idaho, which is near Chicago, not, not too near, the reactor blew up. This reactor was monitored, was manned by only two people. There they don't need so many people. But since they have three safety devices for every failure, if one switch fails, second switch, second switch fails, third switch, then how did this reactor blow up? And when you see the movie, it's like in the cartoon, these two operators were sitting on the top of the reactor, they got fossilized in the concrete. You could see them fossilized. That's the first time I realized how fossils are made. When the pressure, time is so short that it doesn't have time to burn, then you become fossilized. And so these two guys got fossilized and they were wondering why. It's like our missing plane, they're not, still not able to solve. So. Then they went and started studying the human nature. They found operator A wanted to kill operator B because operator B was running around with A's wife. One billion dollar reactor was to be scrapped. So I felt if the same thing happened in Bombay, Mumbai, one crazy operator does something and all the radioactivity water flows into the Bombay Harbor, what will happen to Bombay? We will all have to leave Mumbai. You can imagine what, is, what will happen to the economy of the country. So that's when I switched over, 1972 after my MS, I switched over PhD to fusion. Fusion you can make energy out of water and even if the entire reactor blows up, it is like a cylinder blowing up, that is all. There is no contamination, there is no poisoning of water, nothing. But when I started working on the fusion reactors, I found it is way, way, very difficult, very complicated. And so I said, meanwhile in my PhD, I, I'm not, I don't have the slide, but 
uh, everybody knows that magnetic moment is a constant, right? Please correct me. And this was discovered by a, a Swedish scientist called Hans Alfven who won the Nobel Prize for discovering that. But the same particle when it goes in a fusion reactor where the re there is a gas, the magnetic moment is not a constant like it is in a fusion reactor. So they are all trying to find out how these particles behave. So right from 1960 onwards, there is an institute of advanced study in Princeton. They were working on that. Many foreign teams were working on it, but they couldn't go anywhere. Luckily for me, it happened to be that I had to solve the problem. So I found out the two invariants, which is nothing but the ratio of magnetic moment to the energy is a constant. That is an invariant. If E is constant, mu is constant which is anyhow Alphen has said. But when E is not constant, mu is not constant, how do they vary? So we found out, then after two years, somebody, some scientists from Princeton sent me a, a 35 page derivation just to say, sir, you are right, you know. So in other words, you can satisfy your, your creativity both in engineering and science. All you have to do is enjoy and innovate, that is all. I think with that, I think I will stop, okay. Thank you, thank you. Any any other questions, please? No, because they are so far behind, and I don't want to work in fission. The Kalpakam is a fission reactor. Bombay is a fission reactor. There is no fusion reactor anywhere in the world yet, and. Fusion is the way in the future, right? What we used to laugh is, it's called controlled fusion, therm controlled thermonuclear fusion. Right now, it's confusion, you know. So we are in the stage of confusion right now. But once it comes up, it will solve the energy problem. And the good thing about fusion reactor is, you can just put two plates. And the entire energy is converted, 99.99 percent efficiency. But, but people are waiting on PFBRs now. Yeah, so like LMFBR, liquid metal fast breeder reactors or ordinary reactors, pressurized what? They're all, I would say, keep off. Keep off because if you want to use it somewhere, build it somewhere far away from any civilization, I would say that. Okay. Build it away from any civilization where in case any contamination or accident takes place, the local people or local waters, local cities do not get affected. Okay, but I have not said it. I mean, uh, this is what my feeling is. That is why I quit nuclear fission. So it is one idea. But still we are 10 times next jump. If we are there, we have won the battle. But I felt nothing is going to happen next 30 years and I went the other day, it has not moved one inch, 30 years. So I said, thank God I came back. I was supposed to join Purdue University or University of California as a professor, but I said no. Okay, because unless, it's the idea, that's what I'm saying, you know, the Russian scientists who said, went with the simple premise, nature is made simple. Americans have got money, they can complicate it. He just twisted, removed every bloody twist and it worked 10 times better. That's why it's called Tokamak. Toka is a Russian name. Mac is a machine. Toka means current. It's a current machine. Okay. So let's hope any of the Indian uh, scientists can find a, it's just an idea, that's all I'm telling you. 
we are, we are so close at the same time we don't know how close we are. If any of you young boys can take up the challenge, you will do a humanity a favor. Yeah. In the marine side, not on the land. In the water, Babu. Yeah, now the, now it's become widespread. No, no, it's become widespread. Wherever you want the water to come out, you know, you need a, that pores, which are, the pores should be finer than the particle you are filtering. If the, if the so many micro, x micron, your pore should be less than that x micron. Then the particle won't come out due to the pressure. First time we imported it from uh, uh, Holland, when we built Navashiva, at the time they were not manufacturing this. And after that they started manufacturing in India. They say how many stones we have saved, you know. Now same thing, the sand we have saved. In uh, all this I would have to make with stone. There is no stone available in West Bengal. You have to bring it from Madras or Andhra or Orissa. Why waste money? When you got this ready made, use it. You know. Let's thank the Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Can I come up there? Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, thank you, Babu. Oh, oh, thank you, DC. Thank you. Huh? Oh, hey. Thank you, thank you, all of you.